you're welcome to my channel in this video we are going to look at an example about cost of capital cost of capital is a subtopic under financing decision which is a third topic in financial management the example says Trinidad International is currently using the following sources of funds in its operations the sources of funds we have we have bonds, we have irredeemable preference shares, we have ordinary shares, we have reserves, and we have the total capital, which is $2 billion. Then they want us to determine the overall cost of capital for Trinidad International, but they have given us additional information. In the additional information, they are saying the bonds were issued as a five-year redeemable instrument. The N is five years. And it's a redeemable instrument currently trading at a market rate of 22,000 per bond. So the market rate for a bond is 22,000. And the sources of funds that have told us 12.5% bonds audit at a face value of 20,000. And the amount is 600 million. In order for us to calculate for the overall cost of capital, we have to first find the specific cost of capital for each source of finance and we shall calculate one by one. We shall start with a redeemable bond. From our question, the interest rate for the bond was 12.5%. So in order for us to get the real interest, we shall get 12.5 out of 100 times the face value, which was 20,000. So our interest is 2,500. And our first value was 20,000, our market value was 22,000, and our tax rate was 30% from the question. Then our N was 5 years. We are going to calculate for the specific cost of capital for the redeemable bond first. This is the formula for calculating for the specific cost of a redeemable bond. Yeah, we discussed it in our previous video. You can go and watch it, the video about cost of capital. So this is the formula that we are going to use. And the next thing we are going to do is to substitute in. We shall substitute in the formula. INT, our interest rate was 2,500. Then plus 1 out of N. Our N was 5 years. We put it there. Then into brackets, face value, our face value was 20,000 minus market value, our market value was 22,000. Then out of a half, into brackets, face value, our face value was 20,000 plus the market value, our market value was 22,000. Then we multiply. We multiply by 1 minus T. Our T is the tax rate. It was 30%, which is 0 0.3. So 1 minus 0 0.3. So we go on simplifying until we get the final answer. The interest is 2,500 plus when you divide 1 by 5, you get 0 0.2. Then into brackets, when you... Subtract 22,000 from 20,000, you get negative 2,000. Then out of a half into brackets, when you add 20,000 plus 22,000, you get 42,000. Then in the brackets, when you subtract 1 minus 0 0.3, we get 0 0.7. And when we use a calculator, we put in the whole thing, the cost of debt for the redeemable bond is 0 0.07. But it has to be in percentages, so we multiply by 100, so it's 7%. That is the specific cost of a redeemable bond. Then we shall go to the next source of finance, which is irredeemable preference shares. It has a rate of return of 12.5%, and the amount is $200 million. Yeah, and in additional information, they said the preference shares are in denominations of shillings, 10,000, and issued at par. 
So our market value is 10,000 with a dividend rate of 12.5 percent. Yeah, so we shall use that information to calculate for the specific cost of irredeemable preference shares. The formula for calculating for specific cost of irredeemable preference shares is dividends out of the market value. And from our question, the shares were issued that per, so the market value was equal to the face value. Our market value was 10,000. And dividends, in order for us to calculate for the dividends, we get the dividends rate times the face value. So we get 12.5 out of 100 times 10,000. So our dividends are 1,250. Then we shall substitute in our formula, which is D out of P0. Our D is 1,250 and our P0 is 10,000. So the specific cost of irredeemable preference shares is 0 0.125. When you multiply by 100, it becomes 12.5%. The next source of finance we shall handle is ordinary shares. And ordinary shares, it has an amount of 800 million. And in additional information, they told us ordinary shares carry a face value of 80,000 per share. That is the face value. And the company recently paid dividends at a rate of 1,200 per share. And it's estimated to grow at 6% per annum. So the growth rate, the growth rate is 6% per annum. And the dividends is 1,200 per share. Then the shares are currently trading for shillings 10,000 in the market. So that is the market value. The market value is 10,000. So we shall use that information to calculate for the specific cost of ordinary shares. Specific cost of ordinary shares, we shall use the formula D out of P0 plus G, whereby D is the dividends, and our dividends was 1,200. P0 is the market value. The market value was 10,000 from the question. And G is the growth rate. From the question, our growth rate was 6%, which is 0 0.06. Then we shall substitute in the formula D, which is 1,200 out of P0, which is 10,000, plus G, which is 0 0.06. When we use a calculator, the cost of equity for ordinary shares is 0 0.18 and in order for us to put it into percentage we shall multiply by 100 so the specific cost is 18 percent the last source of funds is reserves yeah reserves has an amount of 400 million but it has no additional information Though it's argued that some people say that we don't calculate for the cost of reserves because it's a free source of finance, so it has no rate of return. Therefore, we don't calculate for the cost of reserves. Yeah, we only calculate when we are calculating for the cost of capital, we only calculate for cost of debt and cost of equity. Though some people say that we calculate for it. Therefore, in case we are to calculate for it, this is the formula we are supposed to use. Chained earnings, and we use the formula of D out of P0 plus G, whereby D is dividends, P0 is the market value, and G is the growth rate. And from our question, the D we had was 1,200, the P0 was 10,000, and the growth rate was 6%, which is 0 0.06. Then we shall substitute in the formula in order for us to calculate for the specific cost of reserves. We shall substitute in the formula. Our D is 1,200 out of P0, which is 10,000, 
plus the growth rate which is 0 0.06 and our cost of reserves or retained earnings is 0 0.18 when we multiply by 100 it's 18 percent and those were the specific costs for all the sources of funds and in order for us to calculate for the overall cost of capital we need to have the specific cost and the proportion yes yeah, so we we are done calculating for the specific cost so the next thing we are going to do is to get the proportion for each source of funds and we calculate proportion by dividing amount of each source of funds divided by the total capital and from our question our total capital was two billion so we are going to calculate the proportion for each source of funds we shall start with a proportion for bonds from our question the amount for bonds was 600 million 600 million divided by the total capital which is 2 billion we get 0 0.3 so that is the proportion of a bond then preference shares the amount for preference shares was 200 million divided by the total capital which is 2 billion and the proportion is 0 0.1 from our question ordinary shares had an amount of 800 million divided by the total capital which is 2 billion and the proportion is 0 0.4 then for reserves reserves had an amount of 400 million divided by the total capital which is 2 billion and the proportion is 0 0.2 and when we add the total proportions it has to give us one so 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2 it gives us one so that is the proportion for all the sources of funds then the next thing we shall do is to calculate for the overall cost of capital or the weighted average cost of capital in order for us to calculate work we shall draw a table yeah, we shall first draw the column of source, sources of funds where we have bonds, preference shares, ordinary shares, and then reserves. Then the next column will be for amount. Bonds had an amount of 600 million. Preference shares had an amount of 200 million. Ordinary shares had an amount of 800 million. And reserves had an amount of 400 million. And the total amount, the total capital was 2 billion then we shall draw another column another column for proportion yeah we, we already calculated for proportion for bonds it was 0 0.3 for preference shares it was 0 0.1 for ordinary shares it was 0 0.4 and for reserves it was 0 0.2 and the total proportion is 1 then we shall have another column for specific cost of capital specific cost of capital for bonds was 0 0.07 for preference shares was 0 0.125 for ordinary shares was 0 0.18 and for reserves was 0 0.18 then the last column will be for weighted cost in order for us to get weighted cost we shall multiply proportion times specific cost of capital so for bonds it's 0 0.3 times 0 0.07 we get 0 0.021 for preference shares it's 0 0.1 times 0 0.125 we get 0 0.0125 we do the same thing for all the sources of funds and the total weighted cost is 0 0.1415 yeah, in order for us to get the weighted average cost of capital, we, we get the 0 0.145 times 100. So the overall cost of capital is 14.15%. That is the overall cost of capital that they asked for. That was the end of financing decision, which is the third topic of financial management. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends and watch my next video. We shall be talking about the fourth topic which is capital budgeting.